Hello friends and welcome to the channel. This is Stormhaven Gaming, I'm John, and this is Nahl Burke's Dungeon Master. Yeah. So this is a fairly recent release, came out a few days ago, um, right in the middle of my problems with uploading, so I wasn't able to get to it before now. Um, it's um, a, a dungeon building sim, management sim. And it looks quite interesting. Based, I believe, on a French uh, audio show. Not 100% sure, but I think it's, it's about role playing, uh, tabletop role playing games, that sort of thing. As you can see, I have played a little bit of it on Sandbox just to get to grips with it, so you see if I can figure out how it, it works. Not sure I've done that, but let's give it another go. We'll go with the campaign, I think. Uh, play as Revax, the steward of the dungeon of Nachelberg. Build, furnish, and populate the dungeon, and most importantly, try not to anger your master, the evil wizard Zangdar. Okay, sounds fair. Let's go. Do I wish to start the campaign? Uh, yes. There we are. That is our dungeon, um, and as far as I'm aware, we can just keep building up like that, yes. For decades, the dungeon of Naubuk has been one of the crown jewels of the lands of Fang. Has it, Zangdar? Huh, that's funny. I never heard of it when I was studying for my Bitter Warlock Sidekick certification. Um, public relations are tough for independent dungeons. Oh. Aren't you affiliated with the Dungeons Fund? With those unscrupulous parasites? Never. <clears throat> but we do have the most insidious traps, the most cunning guards, the most dreadful monsters, and the most remarkable treasures. I'm not sure I believe you, Zangda. How delightful. May I look around? No, uh, we, we've been renovating. The paint's still wet. Uh-huh. Ah, too bad. Despite our reputation being well established, I've decided that this dungeon needs to take things to the next level. Yes, yes, the ad made that very clear. And I need more time for my magical research. Certainly. So, about my compensation, I... <coughs> well, let's not quibble over trifles. I'm aligned with industry norms. Not to mention, there's the gratification of joining a renowned wizard. <laughs> yes, of course. May I meet the other members of the team? Well, actually, not today. They're attending a seminar for process uh, improvement. You know what I mean. Process? The clock is ticking, and you're not the only applicant. What's your decision? This is a once-in-a-lifetime offer. I'm interested. Not like I have a choice anyway. No one's hiring half goblins. There's too much discrimination in this sector. All right, I'm in. Perfect, perfect. You made the right choice. And now? Yes? Get to work, you wretch. I don't pay people to stand around. Uh, yes, master. All right, let's see. Where is the dungeon stuff? What state are the premises in? I'll have a look around the property. <laughs> I wonder if signing this contract was such a good idea. Well, let's find out. Oh, hello. Yes, we can we can move the cameras around. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Welcome to the du dungeon of Nahalbuk. The dungeon has been in a poor state for too long. Your mission is to restore it. In other words, make it profitable. As you can see, its reputation is currently at 1. A crappy dungeon. Uh, which is really bad. Your goal is to improve it and make it the most feared and attractive dungeon in the lands of Fang. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, select Zangdar. Where is Zangdar? Hello, Zangdar. I have to select you. Uh, this is Zangdar, the master of the dungeon. When his patience gauge reaches zero, it's game over. Okay. So we can't let him lose his patience. Fine. Uh, select Revax. Where is Revax? Um, uh, 
That's a good question. Where is Revax? Oh, there. Revax is outside. Hello, Revax. Meet Revax, the new dungeon steward. In other words, the head stooge. Okay, that, that's all we need to know about Revax, clearly. Uh, select a minion. Who have we got? Oh, we've got ourselves a kitchen over here. We have a Always chef. Ready for work. A minion has an origin. Uh, human. A profession. Cook. A rank. Um, eight. Possibly. And a salary. Okay. Grade 1 minions, in turns, cost nothing. A minion gains experience while working, thus increasing their rank. Higher ranking minions claim high, higher salaries, but fail less in their tasks. In the lands of Fang, the unit of time is the 10-day week. Every week, all minions receive their salary. The dungeon fees deducted each week are shown in orange. Okay, so we're currently paying 45 coins a week. We have 10,000. Each minion has specific needs. Okay, they don't appear to be showing up here. Uh, if the needs aren't met, health and morale gauges will decline. Presumably that's the health and morale gauges. There we are. They die when they run out of health and resign when their morale hits rock bottom. Master, if I may, isn't it a bit strange for an evil dungeon to have its tavern open to the public? Ah, yes, well, it's a convenient way to make some money. But I'm not very good at managing it. I see. Well, it could prove to be useful. Okay, so presumably the tavern is where we get our money from. Good, good. Oh, hello. We'll never be able to retain our staff with such rundown premises, Master. I have no money to spend on a luxury lounge for my lazy servants. Oh, but it's a matter of standards. Take the Temple of Wismo, for example. They have 18 toilets just for the servants. What? Those frauds. Uh, well, do what you must, but don't go overboard. We're not running a hotel. Let's see. We won't get anywhere without bathrooms, for starters. Chamber pots and manure heaps are so last century. Okay, so we have to build a bathroom and place two latrines. Now, uh, as I say, I have played this a little bit on um, Sandbox. So, let's have a look. Bathroom. We need a bathroom. I'm going to place it roughly centrally, I think, if I can. Uh, I want this to be our um, first guardhouse in here. So, let's pop it in over here. Doesn't need to be huge, but I do want to make it big enough to expand later on. Um, we'll put doors either side, and we'll just put in the two latrines that we need for the moment. 280 coins. Uh, time can be stopped or sped up. Yes, it can. So, let's speed up and watch them build our latrines. a decent bathroom. Now, dormitories with beds. I don't pay you to nap. Speaking of payment... Later, later. Super busy, magical research and all that. I think I'll have to put a little slush fund aside. Okay, so now we want a dormitory. So, um... Over here is probably okay. And again, we'll make it reasonably large, so we can expand into it. Uh, we only need two beds at the moment, so let's put them around that way, I think. Um, I will put some more in. There we go. Six beds should be enough for the moment. And we'll let them get on and build that. Shouldn't take them too long. There we go. All right, what next? Master, the living quarters improvements are complete. Ugh, not bad, but very expensive. Hardly. We'll have to find some more money. 
If I'd wanted to go bankrupt, I'd have hired an interior designer. I hear you, but given the state of the dungeon, I'm not sure how we could defeat a party of adventurers, even beginners. If we're not up to snuff, it'll be your fault, entirely. But I just got here and, well, I do serve an evil wizard, not a charity. Okay, what are we doing next? We've got our dormitories, we've got our latrines. We have to develop this tavern to bring in some income. Good idea, Revax. The old tavern keeper is gone. Yet another ungrateful coward. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I've got better things to do. I must focus on my magical research and developing my management skills. Oh, stop interrupting me then, Zangdar. I can handle it. So, let's see. We need tables for customers, equipment for serving food and drinks. In the meantime, I shall subscribe to a few periodical publications about evil dungeon management. We need to get this up to date. I wonder if he knows what he is doing. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Don't you overspend. We want to extort gold from the poor, not waste our money on furniture for drunkards. Okay, so select the tavern. The tavern is selected. The tavern attracts customers looking to spend their gold. Each item in the tavern has a maintenance cost that is automatically deducted at the beginning of every week, just like wages. The sum in orange uh, includes salaries and the tavern's maintenance cost. Okay, so that's all included down there. The number of customers and the tavern's income depends on the number of seats. For the moment, your idiot minions occupy the places of your precious customers to eat. Uh, select the editing tool to add items. Okay, so... Uh, we need to modify the tavern to accommodate four additional customers. Can we... Yes, let's move that first, and then we can put another one in right next to it. And that should give us a little bit more space moving forward. Okay, let's uh, get our builders here as quickly as possible. There we go. I like the way he just kicks the uh, old table to break it. Minions use a tavern as their canteen. Hmm, we should take that into account. There. Table and sideboard. This should be enough to lure in a few dupes. Ugh. I hired an evil dungeon steward, not a lunch lady. Indeed, master. But we need some revenue. Look, all these customers should earn us some gold. This is true. Uh, and in fact... Oh, no. Oh, hello, we've got someone charging up to meet us, have we? The dramatic music is good. Who are you? Orloff for debrief, Master. Hey, what's with this dull-looking goblin? Orloff, okay. Half goblin? Who is this brute? He is the dungeon swordmaster and guard commander. So... Are you back from the retaliatory raid? Affirmative. We made it to target location. The so-called Temple of Wismal. Enemy ambush fighting. 100% loss rate on our side. Debrief over. Oh, well well done, Olaf. 100% loss. Brilliant. What? You turkeys! I was injured six times myself. We were expected. I am the guard commander, not a marauder. This requires specific operational preparation. Clearly. This doesn't speak highly about your abilities. Who asked you, you withered piece of lettuce? Silence, you two! Revax is our new steward. As for you, Orloff, maybe I should get a new swordmaster. Certainly, sir. But I'll complain to the Guild of Mercenaries and Dungeon Guards. This wasn't in my job description. Ugh. Cursed me the bowels of the Great Talifern. I'm so sick of these union demands. Beat it, both of you! I'm going back to my research. Hmm. I think we'd better try to collaborate. In our mutual interest, sword master. Yeah. Affirmative. For now, you little... I mean, yes, steward. Oh, good. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Um, let's pause it for a second. I want to put in another table. Okay, I'm going to put in another table there for the moment. Just to get some more... Um, 
customers in get a little bit more gold coming in hopefully this failed raid explains why this dungeon is so badly guarded anyone can just waltz in if we want to get rid of adventurers we should deal with slackers first affirmative the downsizing caused by the incursion attempt on the Temple of Wismal is weighing on staff rotation. We must recruit new elite guards. Guards are expensive. I read in Dungeons and Despots that support roles should be outsourced as part of a... Uh, atomized management of the company's processes. Oh, Xandar. Don't you mean optimized, Master? Silence! You know nothing of modern dungeon management vocabulary. As for you, improve the guard, but with no superfluous expenses. We could hire a few interns. They shouldn't cost us much. We'd just have to think about feeding them from time to time. Affirmative. That's it for now. I'll bring them up to speed. Trust me on that. Attention. At ease. Okay, so we are building a guard room with three lockers for human soldiers. So, in this you can get, as we've looked at before when we looked at the, um, the, the chef... You have different origins. So you can have humans, elves, um, goblins, dwarves, orcs, trolls, I think. All sorts of stuff. So, guard room. This is where I want to put our guard room. In this kind of central area here. Like that. And we will put doors on either end. Uh, we need a table so that they can have some relaxation time uh, and we want three human guard lockers so we'll put those along there uh, and we should probably unpause it so they can build it all done so each locker automatically recruits one or more guards they go about their business until the alarm goes off when it does they'll automatically go into battle well the alarm going off may be an issue each locker increases the population. We've got a max population of 30. Uh, we have three guards. Ah, the first interns have arrived. Soldiers, attention! Line up in pairs with the front rank. I only want to see one head. I'm curious to see how he goes about training them. Ideally, we should find a pile of dirt and make them dig a hole to bury him. But, but that's absurd. Negative. This is training through blind obedience. To think is to disobey. Come on, on the double, rookies. Hop two, hop two, hop two. Okay, we now have an incursion. So, where are you coming from? They are coming from the front door. There they are. We have a couple of people coming in to attack our dungeon. That's right. Aim for the knees and the eyes. Be sly and cruel. Honor and chivalry are for losers. And this is the problem with the alarm going off. The alarm only goes off when they are spotted by the guards. Um, that could be some time. In the meantime, uh, I can't do anything in the meantime because I need to wait until the incursion is over before I can build anything. So they're just wandering around. Let's let's speed things up. I can't control the guards in any way. I can't direct them. Yep, just, just wandering around. Are you going to go into there now? Go into the guard room. Yes, there we go. So, now our guards will be alerted and come in to join the fight. Only two... Oh, no, there's the other one. I was going to say, only two of them have turned up. That's one down. Oh, who are you? I need a... Orlov, pretty brief. The intruders were evicted from the perimeter. Clean sweep. Ah, finally. This is a dungeon, not a squat for teenage pipe-smoking dropouts. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a, a ranged guard here for some reason. We have... Oh, no, that's all off there. That's why. That's fair. So you just turned up late. Brilliant. Okay, now, what was I going to do? Oh, yes. Uh, I do want to add it in. Hmm... Yeah, I'm going to put in one more human guard locker there. Okay, what have we got? Relax! 
Why are my minions so agitated? I can't focus in such a ruckus. One of the servants is on strike, Master. He's protesting against his working conditions. I could send the guards to slaughter this slacker. Civilians are so entitled. I'm not sure that's the best approach for retaining competent staff, Master. We must listen to his demands and fulfill them, if they're legitimate. I don't care about the specifics. I just need this rocket silenced. Deal with it, or you'll get the whip! Incidentally, there's an article in Dungeons and Despots about the psychological torture of middle management minions. <laughs> okay, so we have a... Ah, this will be our chef. Right, I'm busy. So, the be beginning of each week, strikes can break out in the dungeon with potentially disastrous consequences. Uh, they annoy Zangdar. So when a striker's energy gauge is empty, they stop protesting. If this happens, the morale of the minion is greatly reduced. The striker's union always displays their demands. Meet their demands to end the strike. You know what? Forget it. Their demands are unattainable for now. Just get rid of this ingrate by firing them. However, firing a minion costs gold. The amount depends on their rank. And this is a rank 8. Alright. Alright, alright. So, yes, so their um, uh, demands are they want to work with their pet chicken. They want to work six days a week. They want dental coverage, five weeks off a year, a raise, a coffee break, drink in the workplace, sit five minutes per hour worked, a uh, glass of water, and Zangdar's resignation. So, we, yeah, the, these are all obviously just silly demands because the story demands that Gondoland Prune Fort uh, gets fired. So, 150 gold. Off you go. Out with the striker. It'll make an example of him. Still, I should try to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's done, Master. Everything is back to normal. The strike is over. About time. Let's move on. I've just been informed that the Temple of Wismo has increased its reputation, while we've been sitting on our haunches whistling nursery rhymes. We should limit the risk of strikes. The dungeon won't be able to repel adventurers with disgruntled minions. Affirmative. To smash those little snoopers, you need motivated, and therefore well-fed, guards. These matters are unworthy of a high-level wizard. They're better suited for interns. Of course, Master. I'll see what I can come up with, but we'll need a cook. As long as they're not too expensive and can cook sumptuous meals. Bear and beer stew, for example. Mm. It's also necessary to adapt the food to each species. If we serve elfish fare to goblins, they'll start eating the elves, too. Okay, so, uh, I need to build Revax's office. Hmm, where can I put Revax's office? Tell you what, I can probably put Revax's office right here, can't I? Right over the entrance to Zangdar's office. Uh, and a desk of inhuman resources. Uh, let's pop you there. 430 gold, good lord. Okay, but we're going to need to build um, a canteen. And we're also going to need to hire um, a new chef. Probably want more than one chef, actually. Let's move that. I want to move that to there. Uh, and I will move this. Oh, yeah, all right. So, to review profiles for recruitment, to uh, click on the recruitment tab. We've only got one available, and they are an orc. Okay. Well, I, I guess we're hiring them then. Ha! Usor. You're hired. Okay, and you, I want to move to there should be okay. Okay, I know that orcs... There we are. Select an orc minion to view their information. Heads is only solution. <laughs> there you go. So, the origin of the minion determines its special traits and behaviours. For example, orcs are carnivorous, which requires your kitchens to produce... Uh, produce meals of meat. 
Good. Good, good, good. Well, they'll be producing meat then. Oh, hello. Someone else is coming. We need to put a revolving door on this castle. All right, who are you? Ahoy! I heard you're looking for a cook. All right, Mel. Well, yes, but I just hired one. An orc cook. It's the best I could afford. Are you qualified? I sure am. I've been a cook, a barber, adventurer, surgeon, executioner, and embalmer. I can peel and bone like nobody's business. Mel Boots, here to serve you with a preference for ale. Anyway, do you have someone for your tavern? Ah, okay, so Mel is going to be our uh, innkeeper, is he? Well, actually, we don't. It is true we could use a good tavern keeper, but my budget's a bit tight. I'll skim my pay off the take. Come on. Oh, well, that's you reassuring. Won't regret it. I'll turn it into a first-class boozing den. All of Fang will come here to get hammered. Just gotta keep the dishes real salty. Gotcha. Relocating towards the bar. March. Hop two. Hop two. Uh, our minions are eating at the tavern, reducing your maximum number of customers. A canteen allows minions to eat in a separate room, which won't scare away your most wealthy clientele. Okay, so we need to build a canteen now. So, uh, I think I'm going to put that up here in this corner, maybe. Maybe across there. And we'll put entrances in there and there. And we'll put in three tables for the moment. That's 500 gold. What have we got? A large dining table. Cannot be used by dwarves. Cannot be used by dwarves. Specific table for a uh, for the dwarves. But that, we're, we're away from that at the moment. Okay. Um, speed things up. Oh, we've got three uh, messages. Uh, yes, we've seen all of that. Thank you. Yes, this is our message checking down here. Okay, there is our canteen built. Master, we have significantly improved the minions' living conditions. And for cheap, too. And we'll serve them good. Cheap plunk, hard ale, and sausage that'll dry out your gullet. What? Who is this individual? It's, um, Mel, the new tavern keeper. I'll explain. Ugh, my patience is running thin. We spend too much on nonsense here, and our reputation is stagnating. It's all right. It's it's increasing. We're a quarter of the way through level one. Uh, what do you want? Hey, uh, no offense, but your dungeon's got quite a stench, don't you think? Reeks like a bunch of dead rats. What? No, it doesn't. We just cleaned the mess and fired the slackers. Just saying, but this morning I saw a cockroach so grossed out it puked. Mind you, I'm not the kind to wash the mugs every day or to take more than one bath a month, but hey, there are limits to filth. Hmm, it is true that to attract a certain class of customers or servants, we'll need to raise our standards. Cleaning, improving sanitary facilities, and hiring decent domestics. Yep, exactly. Elves will do the trick. I know they're a bunch of lettuce munchers who think they're hot dung, but they don't mess around with cleanliness. Okay, so we need to hire a domestic elf. Oh, Gamador. Hello, Gamador. They have special needs, too. Okay. A vegetarian. They refuse to meet eat. No, they refuse to eat meat or dishes. Okay. I'm not sure what that means by or dishes. Okay, so we'll rec recruit you. Uh, select the bathroom. Rooms produce dirt, as do the minions when they move around. Depending on their origin or their traits, hygiene or dirtiness has an impact on the morale of minions, such as elves or greenskins. This button indicates to the domestics whether the room should be cleaned regularly. Well, yes, let's keep that room clean. Um... Oh, and we can build new things in there as well. So we've got showers. We need to place two of those. 
uh, and we have a mud inflow uh, reserved for green skins, goblins, orcs and trolls and they dirty up at the showers instead of getting clean. Okay, that's fair. Let's put in some uh, showers. Then we only want, well, we only need two, but let's put in four, uh, and we will put in. Oh, okay. Put that in up there. Two hundred and sixty gold. We can afford that, right? Uh, we want to hire an elf cook, so we need an additional stove in the kitchen, which is why I moved everything around. So, oh, it still doesn't fit. Why not? Is that too close to it then, still? Alright, okay, in which case. We'll put it there instead. Um, and we also need another pantry, so I'm going to need to move. Well, let's build that first. What might this object in this shower be? A faucet? I see! Fascinating! Well, at least they shower with their clothes on. Ah, okay, so that one's having a mud shower, clearly, and that one's having a proper shower, because that's an orc. Excellent. Hello, Mel. Okay. There we go. Put that in there. Come on, build it. There we go. Now, I want to put in another pantry. Increases our food storage. So, currently, we can only store five of each food. Oh, there we go. Dishes. I'm not sure what that means. That's a type of food, obviously. Just general muck. I don't know who eats that. Um, meat, obviously. Vegetables we're about to start reducing. Because we have ourselves a, uh, an elf cook. Did we not hire the elf cook? I thought we hired the... Oh, no, we hired the elf uh, cleaner, didn't we? Oh, a level one cook. Uh, Adorn is Evion. You're hired. Revax! The Temple of Wismal had marble columns installed. I just saw the etchings in the Dungeons and Despots magazine. Oh, not again with that rag. We need to revamp my dungeon's decor. This is an essential aspect of the, uh, the prolificacy of this organization's processes. Productivity, master? But you said we don't have the funds to... Just make some improvements, or I'll turn you into a flower pot. And stop contradicting my managerial guidelines, or you'll get your termination notice from Orlok's crossbow. Okay, so we are going to increase the prestige of the rooms and thus the dungeon's reputation. Ooh, okay, so we've got a bunch of decorations that we can put around the place. Um, not many of them unlocked yet. Oh, got a fair few. Wow, it's quite a lot to unlock. Yeah, quite a lot there. Okay. And the ones we've all got access to already are fairly cheap. So, let's pop some decorations in around, uh, around the entrance. Oh, we do have two entrances, by the way. We've got this one here, uh, and we have another one over here. So, um, adventurers can get in this way to attack the dungeon as well. Um, but first, let's give ourselves... A couple of candelabra in the entrance there. Um, oh, no, we want to validate that. Um, and let's have a look. What have we got? Oh, we've got access to elf, guard, elf guards and orc guards as well. All right, let's get three orcs in there. Um, I'm not going to get any elves at the moment because I think if you... I don't think it's okay. I think... Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I've played through already. But yes, let's get six new guards. That'll give us a total of ten guards, which should be plenty for now. Um, we want decorations. Here we go. We can give them a small chest to store stuff in. Uh, and we can put that in there. Um, in fact, let's give them some light as well. Where can we put a candelabra? Uh, let's pop one there for now. And hopefully that counts towards the, uh, the decorations in total. 
Yep, we've got access to the elves as well. Come on, put these in. Come on, hurry up. Apparently only one build is working on this at the moment. There we go. Ah, I'm quite pleased with my choice of decor. I shall write to the Dungeon Orders Association of Fang to share my creative insights. I hope this won't get us into trouble. I think that's called foreshadowing. Yet another visitor. Hello, I'm looking for the master of the dungeon of Nahulbuk. Oh, hello, Doris. Well, I am his steward. How may I help you? I'm here about the letter he sent to the Dungeon Owners Association of Fang. Are you going to publish his article on interior decoration? I don't know. This is a matter for the DOAF Gazette editorial board. I am Doris Martadella, Head Inspector of the Dungeons Fund. I'm here for your membership application. What? The DF? But, uh, we didn't apply for membership. There must be some mistake. Your master wrote to the DOAF. According to DOAF regulations, any such communication is to be considered as a membership application to its parent company, the Dungeons Fund unless expressly stated otherwise. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of story. But that's... Uh, oh, puss and boils! This is utter nonsense! What if we refuse to join? I'm going to skip through this. This is basically... We, we have to... Your right. Pay them, so... It'd be easier to... Pox and mute... You, you can pause it if you In need it. Office. Okay, this is the general terms and conditions of servitude. It's actually quite interesting and funny to... To read through it, but I'm not going to because it is quite long, as you can see. By ticking the box, you accept to all clauses, giving the master full power over your miserable existence. Of course you do. Yes or yes in red. Let's go with yes in red. Congratulations on joining the Dungeons Fund. I will now share with you all my initial reports requiring immediate action on your part. So she'll give us things to do Bye. to improve. Oh, tentacles! I can't believe we got plate. I've noted you lack a space dedicated to temporary interruption. Uh, you accrued. Okay, so minions' morale. Uh, the gauge is influenced by three distinct needs: the cleanliness of the room, their hunger level, and their level of entertainment. Basically, so let's slow things down again, so we're not spending too much money as time goes by. We need a break room. And it's probably a decent idea to stick it up here with the um, canteen, isn't it? So let's do that. Canteen. Uh, no, no, we don't want canteen. No, 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 no. We want break room. There we go. Um, and we'll put it in like that. Yeah, I think too wide is good enough for a corridor. And we'll put the door in there. What if it's worth putting a door... Yeah, let's put a door straight through there. So they can get from the break room into the canteen easily enough. So, we need gaming tables for them to game at. Uh, we've got reading desks for humans and elves. And we need games of chance. Um, so that dwarves and orcs will use the gaming tables. Okay, 670 gold. Um, I'll tell you what, let's put a little bit of decoration uh, around the place. Just to give it a bit of a, a boost in prestige. There we go. What else can we do? We can add things to the canteen. What can we add? A vegetable buffet and a meat buffet to the canteen. Let's do that. So, a meat buffet can go in there, and the vegetable one can go right next to it. There we go. Um, and, again, we'll pop in a little bit of decoration here and there. Um, 
What else have we got? Oh, let's get a couple of torches up this end. Uh, and a couple of posters. So these are the uh, original comic book coasters, uh, covers by the look of it. Which is quite a nice little Easter egg for those who know the comic book, I guess. Uh, as previously mentioned, I do not. There we go. Perfect! With a gaming table, the minions will get some distraction. Ah, kudos, my friend. That should stop them from wearing out the tavern benches. Okay, um... Build the furnish. What are you finishing? Oh, you're putting in the door. Okay. There we go. Done. A perfectly functional break room for the dungeon's minions. This is supposed to be an evil dungeon. Not a resort for slackers. What's next? A temple of glue complete with giant nap room? Interesting. I shall continue to evaluate the performance of your organization's procedural subfunctions. Okay, yeah, as sure. Well as the... Okay. Good morning, minions. You're listening to Dungeon Radio. Oh yes, it's th there's a radio station. Brilliant. Okay, yes, but we are going to leave it there for this episode. Let's let's pause things for a second so we don't get any uh, more interruptions. Yeah, that's that's. That's where we're going to leave. I, I, I'm, I'm finding this quite good. It's kind of, it's not quite dungeon keeper, or, or that kind of thing. It's a bit more, um, evil genius. I think it feels a lot more like that sort of thing, anyway. Um, but I quite like it. I, I, I like the style of it. Oh, before we um go on, obviously over here we've got the levels, uh, of the uh, dungeon that can be accessed eventually. Um, but if we come out here, we get a, an overview map, so we can easily see what rooms we have and where they are and, and where all of our minions are. And that's the tower itself. So that's the uh, the full outside that we should, in theory, be able to build up into, which is quite nice. I like the airships. I think that should be interesting if we ever get there, but yeah. But, uh, as I say, we will leave it there for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Um, obviously, we haven't done a great deal. We've just started building up. But we're still kind of in this sort of tutorial stage at the moment. So it will take a little while to, to, to pick up. Hopefully, next episode, we'll, we'll get another raid. We'll get another... Um, I thought I paused there. Oh, well. Uh, we'll get another raid, and we'll, we'll have to uh, improve all of our stuff. We'll have to start putting in new bits and pieces in the rooms, start putting in new rooms, uh, and reasonably quickly we'll get onto the second level uh, and we'll get our treasure room and dwarves and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, please do let me know what you think below. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed it. Uh, let me know you want to see more of it. Um, and please join us next time. Until then, I've been John. This has been Nahlberg's Dungeon Master. Please do take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And bye-bye.